This fantastic manga got canceled. And it's not the only one. Why is that? Were they just not good enough? What does good mean? How many good manga have been axed before we could enjoy them? Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why should I care if a manga gets axed? Get good. And that's fair. But what if Vagabond got axed for having a few slow chapters? Or Berserk? Or Naruto? What if your next favorite manga has already been axed? Let's find out. Okay, back to this guy getting punched in the face. This is Ayashiman. Ayashiman, made by Yuji Kaku, who also made Hell's Paradise, was canceled at just 25 chapters. And I think I figured out what this manga was missing and why it got canceled. Can you figure it out? Watch closely. This guy here is Maruo. He wants to be a main character and he's in the right line of business. He grew up reading Dragon Ball, Jojo, and Fist of the North Star. And he spends his childhood punching boulders till his hands broke. Yes, really. As you can see, he's a little crazy. Dare I say, Delulu. He just wants to have a good fight. And we even see him throwing cars at people and punching bad guys so hard their heads explode. Does that sound familiar to you? But Maruo has a big problem. Nobody can stand to his strength. He snaps the punching bag in half like a twig. He clobbers the bullies at school like Mike Tyson punting little kids into the atmosphere, and he can't even get a job because he breaks everything he touches. What's a guy to do? If only some other anime character had this issue, one that was massively popular and had been running for decades. <clears throat> Let's be clear here. Maruo isn't omnipotent or invincible. He's just stronger than any other person, any other human. So he starts fighting guys like this, and this, and this fish head guy. He starts taking on yokai, demons who are also in the Yakuza. Yes, mafia demons. That's pretty cool, right? This guy's playing Doom in real life, and he's loving it. Solid art, interesting characters, funny lines, cool monster design, and an intriguing story. All set in a seedy city in Japan where monsters' bodies are made out of money. The more money, the stronger the monster. And when you kill them, they turn back into money. That's right, the monsters in this manga are literally money pinatas, bro. So why did the manga with money pinata Yakuza yokai demons get Cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. Let's just say it's like the guys up top have a recipe, a formula, and anything that doesn't follow the formula or is a few ingredients off gets burned. But more on that later. Ayashimon is, or was, a great series with a ton of potential. The rules of the world are clear and easy to understand, the fights are flashy and fun, and the characters get along well and each serve a purpose. And it was written by a mangaka who had already had a popular series that has an anime now. Did you figure out what's missing? Here's my take. Maruo starts his journey wanting to be the main character. In his words, a manga protagonist. We see him reading all these famous manga as an escape from his unsatisfying life. But the more he mentions this, the more it feels like he's not them. He's always on the outside looking in. He's not Goku. He's the guy that wants to be Goku. And here's the thing, everybody wants to be Goku, but only Goku is Goku. Maruo is not special, and not in the quote unquote not special way like Rock Lee or Saitama. He's just a guy. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe he wasn't unique enough. Or maybe I'm wrong, we'll never know for sure. But this is just one example of a manga with promise that gets tossed in the trash before it's had enough time. Speaking of time, let's go back to the prehistoric age of 2016 BC, before COVID. This manga... Massive airships, sword fights, steampunk atmosphere, and an old man being used as a human battery. This is the world of Red Sprite. In Red Sprite, humans just discovered electricity 10 years before and found it in old fossils in a form called Thundercores. 
But these thunder cores weren't very potent since they'd been underground for thousands of years, so... Living people were injected with thunder cores and had electrodes implanted into their hands, making them thunder core humans. These thunder core humans are used as living batteries to power their steampunk society. Tatsu Frant is an orphan who is also a thunder core. He was created in a lab and made into a thunder core along with his friends and hundreds of others. Tatsu and his friends get separated and Tatsu swears that he will save them all, no matter what. Does that sound familiar to you? So yeah, Tatsu has cool lightning powers, red lightning powers, which is pretty sick. Other thunder cores like him are enslaved, and he declares war on his oppressors to save his people from their prisons. And it turns out his enemies can use lightning too. You know, the whole thing is supposed to be an allegory for what Nazi Germany did to the Jewish people. Does that sound familiar to you? I read this back in 2021 on the Shonen Jump app, which is fantastic by the way, and it was pretty good. The steampunk atmosphere isn't too common for shonens, and the airships were pretty cool too. Apparently the main character's airship can also produce clouds to hide itself in. Could you imagine watching anime and seeing a massive airship appear out of the clouds and the MC shoots down to the battlefield like Thor in Infinity War? The main character is a little typical though. He's all about the power of friendship and saving his friends and blah, 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 blah. And sometimes the dialogue can be a little on the nose, a little too exposition-y, you know? I don't need to know every little thing about this world. Just put me in it. Just go through the story, bro. You don't have to give me a whole wall of text, man. That's where manga has an advantage. You can just draw what's happening. You don't have to tell me, dog. But if you look back to 2016 when Red Sprite debuted, you can see that competition and jump was stiff. One Piece, Boruto, My Hero, Bleach, Food Wars, Psyche K, and plenty of others all running weekly. And then you have Attack on Titan, which was also about oppressed people with European architecture. Next to all that competition, it must have been hard for Red Sprite to stand out. And... And now it's gone. Suffocated between the giants of Jump. And that's a damn shame. It's like someone wrote its name in the Death Note before it had time to flourish. Also, the volume covers were a bit hard to tell apart, but speaking of Death Note, this next series is kinda like Death Note, without the demons, or the notebook, or the highly detailed art style. This is Super Smartphone. Yes, that tiny thing is a smartphone. A goo goo, -goo smartphone. Not Google, goo goo, -goo. Yes. Kyu Sagurada is a lazy but brilliant high schooler. It's so easy for him to get top grades that he just doesn't do it anymore. He instead tries to get the exact same score every time. He also has a brother named Shu who went missing when they were kids. One day he stumbles upon the death No, I mean super smartphone. Smartphones by themselves are already super OP, but the super smartphone is even more OP. He can use it to track and collect data on all man-made things. This isn't just two day shipping on something from Amazon, okay? It goes a little bit deeper than that. With the Superphone, he can find secret government documents about the discovery of aliens, and even money that's been randomly dropped on the street. But the Superphone does have rules attached to it. He can't see information on the people who gave him the smartphone, and most intriguingly, he can't see any info about his missing brother Shu. Q discovers he's in a competition with other Superphone users to acquire as many Goo Goo, -goo points as possible find his missing brother, and uncover all the secrets of the Superphone. Okay, I know I've said it like eight times here, but... Does this sound familiar to you? He even kind of looks like Light, you know, a little more anime-ish, but... Superphone ran in Shonen Jump in 2022, and it's basically Death Note Light. It's a cat and mouse game based on intelligent people given a powerful tool. But where this story diverges from Death Note is where things get interesting. Since Q is fighting other people that have the same abilities as he does, it creates an equal playing field. You know, where L had to figure out how Light was able to kill people without even touching them, the most intelligent Superphone users are able to figure out each other's strategies somewhat quickly. While this does speed up the story a bit, it also comes at a hindrance. 
What made L interesting, besides being a cute, quirky emo boy, was that he was intelligent enough to basically figure out the Death Note and all of its quirks before even knowing about its existence. But since Superphone users are able to figure each other out so quickly, those payoffs are gone from the story now. It's like if L had a Death Note 2, and he and Light were just competing to get the most Death Note points to meet the Shinigami King or something. For me, one of the most interesting things about Death Note was seeing Light become poisoned by his power and lose his humanity in exchange for becoming a god. But in Superphone, Q is a good guy. He doesn't lose himself in the power of the phone, and he stops other Superphone users from doing bad things because he's the hero. I'd kill for a villain, or an anti-hero, or a depressed kid who would kill humanity since they're never nice to him. Having a character walk the straight and narrow is overdone and unrealistic these days. For a younger audience, it's good to have that role model, but for the rest of us, it just gets flat and boring. Irregardless of that, stories like these, non-battle battle manga, are tough to find, and we shouldn't ax one so quickly. These stories can be naturally slow, but the payoffs can be so worth it since they're so built up over time. Maybe Super Smartphone just needed a bit more time to differentiate itself before getting tossed in the trash heap. Maybe it was just too slow. You know, despite all of these manga having their own flaws that led to them being cancelled, they're still a fun read and I think you should check all of them out. But there's also another manga that's better than all of these combined. The mind games of Superphone, the amazing art of Ayashiman, and the kid main character of Red Sprite. I do a full deep dive into that manga that you can see right here. Be careful though, it'll scar you for life. You can also check out a full breakdown of this video and all of my other videos on my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash sriracha. Link below. Alright, well that's it from me guys. I'll see you next time. Subscribe, all that jazz. See ya.